Grace and peace to all the beloved brethren. I'm convinced there's only one gospel unto salvation, and I pray that you are too. Hello everyone, and welcome to Belief is All. Now I'm a little late to the party because I needed to establish my presence and give my bit of insight on some basic free grace principles. Well, now that that's done, I have to make my first exposed video. My first topic will be David Benjamin. My brothers and sisters have been doing an excellent job at pointing out the many, many things wrong with David Benjamin, so I won't be covering everything here. Instead, I'll be leaving links in the description that point out all of that. Check them out if you want more information. But I wanted to contribute not only to edify the fellowship, but also to talk about a point of contention that puts true salvation at odds with the unsaved. So stick around till the end of this video, and we'll tie it all together. So David Benjamin, what's wrong with him? Well, besides sheep beating, using AI, being lazy, and, and attracting some of Free Grace Community's biggest dropouts, my main point of contention is that he somehow made a whole separate issue out of the book of James. As most of you know by now, the unsaved out there have weaponized James to say that you must have works to be saved. But what if someone said the opposite? Someone who says that if you teach others to work, then you aren't saved. Well, that's David Benjamin. And because of this, he's positioned himself as the king of hyper grace, an offshoot of free grace who differentiate themselves, not only because they don't aspire to works, but find those that would tell people to work to be backloading. But like I said before, more on that at the end of the video. For now, let's focus in on David Benjamin's thoughts on James and why this alone is enough to put him in the mark and avoid pile. So on the surface, it seems like David Benjamin is just like one of us. But you see, Benji fancies himself an author and is writing up a library of his own extra-biblical texts that provide commentary on the scripture. His most infamous work has to be James Trouble, a book that on the surface looks to be fighting the same malignant James 2 and 26 citations that everyone under grace faces. In reality, his book is a takedown of James, a call to remove it as a proof text. What the? But don't take my word for it. Here's an excerpt on James Trouble from David Benjamin's website. James Trouble challenges the prevailing notion that James epitomizes practical Christian living, asserting that Paul's teachings on the believer's death and resurrection with Christ form the true cornerstone of practical Christianity. This book serves as a clarion call to embrace Paul's revelation, lest the gospel be subverted by a work-saturated understanding of justification and sanctification. So as we can see here, he's saying that he wants to challenge James' epistle, which you could say is something that we all do when it comes to the unsaved go bastards. But like I said before, Benji is the B-side of the shitty record that ultimately plays the same song, and that song is titled Damnation. Behold, a note from pages 11 and 12 of James' trouble. In some ways, how to handle James is a secondary issue, and has been treated as such in the past. However, the phrase secondary issue is often used as a cloak for people to bring into agreement with and tolerance for very damaging false doctrines. Because of how this is being handled, I'm no longer willing to say it's a secondary issue, something we can agree to disagree about. To people who have heard my teaching and rejected it, or are commenting all over the place about my teaching that they have never heard, especially when they're standing with blatant wolves and deniers of the gospel. I don't know how it gets any more blatant than that. So first and foremost here, let's go ahead and point out his feminine cattiness. The actual wolves and deniers of the gospel are on too big of a high selling lies to the general public getting their YouTube checks and being propped up by their sycophants to be commenting on David Benjamin. In fact, the main people commenting on David Benjamin are free grace preachers. So those wolves and deniers of the gospel he's referring to are people like Fuego Savvy, Your Friendly Hood, Christian For Real, and others who have made videos exposing this guy's heretical game. Said to say that he doesn't want war with the actual modern day Pharisees, he wants war with the body of Christ. His book is an affront to the word of God, and not only is it an affront, he declared that the accepting of a book of the Bible to be a primary issue, an issue of salvation. What he's saying is that he's no longer willing to consider people who observe James 2 properly, aka those who work to help the brethren, to help win souls, and to generally live a better life saved. What a wicked thing to declare! David Benjamin is a slanderer of the word of God, a beater of God's sheep, and a lazy scoundrel. If his gospel involves the putting away of James, then it's a counterfeit gospel. Let him be accursed. Galatians 1.8 It says in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, 
thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So no, Benji, James is just as serious and necessary for you as it is unserious and unnecessary to actual wolves. Now, I'll explain that line more in a minute, but I finished the Benji portion of this message with this. David Benjamin, I'd stop peddling the satanic book. After all, it says in Matthew 12 and 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You may be sealed, but you don't know who will accept your words unto death. Better find the harmony in the scripture, or me and the body will not let up. You're corrupting the gospel, and we will not stand for it. Now, about that quote. I call James unserious and unnecessary to wolves because they hold James to too high a regard, whereas David Benjamin doesn't hold it in high enough regard. Where does belief is all stand? I love works, just not unto salvation. The gospel that saves is the gospel found in John 3.16. Paul affirms this gospel in Acts 16.31 and then turns around and absolutely slam dunks it with the Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9 amongst, you know, the entirety of the Bible, which affirms it all too. But one thing that I want to make sure I point out is that sin has consequences. You won't lose salvation due to sinning, but you may find relationships, wages, careers, and even your own body in shambles by continuing to indulge in what we know we shouldn't. It's not edifying for yourself or for your brethren. 1 Corinthians 10 and 23. Just because the law doesn't save doesn't mean that the law is not beneficial or irrelevant. The Bible says that the law is perfect in Psalm 19 and 7. You don't have to put away works. Only the men like David Benjamin who try to put works away or the wolves who mix the two. Get saved, then be a disciple. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 and 15. To close, if you're wondering about salvation, believe in Jesus, that he came, died, and rose again, that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. Then, after getting saved, look into working out your faith if you feel so compelled. If you're of the fellowship, then let us aspire to be the best disciples we can be. Not to save us. And I repeat that again. Not to save us. We've already believed unto the gospel that saves. But let's create the best possible world we can for our brotherhood as we bear witness to Christ. I am convinced that there's only one gospel unto salvation, and I pray that after this, you are too. To my beloved brethren, grace and peace. God bless.